Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Here we are at the end of another month, and once again, I feel like all of my procrastination is starting to come back and haunt me and my to-do list. But I'm not going to work late this month. I'm not going to sit there and not enjoy date night, and I'm not going to stay up past my bedtime to rush and get things done. And I'm not going to do all of that because I have been using Sansama for the past three months. They're honestly the only planning assistant that'll act as your friend in need if you want to prevent burnout and establish a sustainable routine. They pull in your emails, calendar events, and tasks from your favorite apps into one focused view for just today and holds your hand towards you finding work-life balance. Guess what? You don't even have to put in your credit card to give it a try. Click the link below and just see what it's like to finally plan your day in Sansama. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. Guess what? Are you ready for this? Your girl turns 35 on April 1st, just a couple of days away. I will be 35 years old. I remember being 25 years old thinking, wow, I have 15 more years till I'm 40. And now I'm 35 years old thinking, wow, I have five more years till I'm 40. And you know what? I don't care as much. It seemed so daunting when I was 25 to think about that. But now that I'm 35, I don't care. Because here's the thing. I think when you enter your 30s, and this is so cliche, but it's so true. Everyone tries to tell you this. When you enter your 30s, your mindset changes. You're no longer like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm getting older. I'm growing up. I have responsibility. You're like, okay, my 20s were fun, made a lot of mistakes, but 30s, it's time to get serious and get things done. And what I mean by that is it's time to take all the mistakes, all the lessons learned that happened to you in your 20s and actually 20s and put them into action to change your life. If you simply sit down in your 30s and you look back at your 20s and you pick a couple of lessons that you learned and apply them to this decade, you will be a drastically, radically different person. Probably a stronger person, probably a smarter person, probably a person who makes way better decisions. As I'm about to approach my 35th birthday, I wanted to think about five lessons that I've learned in my 20s through mistakes, not through success, that have carried me into the first half of my 30s. And these are lessons that have completely changed my life, changed who I am, and changed the things that have happened to me in the past five years. Lesson number one is trust your gut. It knows more than you know in that moment. There's so many times where we're about to make a decision or we have a thought of don't do something or do something. And it's the truth. It's exactly what we need to hear. Don't ignore that voice. The other day I was in like a crazy workout class and they wanted us to do this like sidestep run. And right before we were supposed to do it, I thought, Jen, this is so not a good idea for a person like you. You're naturally clumsy. Your shoes, it was raining outside, so my shoes were soaking wet. It was a very small area that we had to run around. I was like, Jen, just skip this one. Like, what do you have to prove? Anyway, I completely ignored that voice. I said, voice, leave me alone. And I ended up doing the run and I fell and I got really, really, really hurt. And it was one of those moments where I was so mad after because every part of me was like, Jen, don't do this. And I did it anyway. And you all know what I mean. You've all had those gut moments where you're like, do something, don't do something. Something feels right. Something feels wrong. Stop ignoring your gut. Everything in your life will change when you finally listen to that voice inside of you that's telling you what to do if you're with the wrong person. And every single day you wake up and you go, I'm with the wrong person, but I'm going to ignore it. That is wasting your life. If you're working a job where you're like, I cannot be here anymore, 
don't walk out and quit, but stop, stop ignoring that voice and thinking, oh, it'll get better. It'll change. Something will happen to me. Things don't happen to you. They happen because of actions that you do or you don't take. Number two, understand that friendships waver. Sometimes the best friend you ever had in this world becomes a complete stranger that you see again years later and you barely say hi to. And that is okay. Not every friend you have is going to want to stick around in your life for your whole life. And you're not going to want to stick around in their life either. In my 20s, my best friend in the world broke up with me. She said, you know, I don't want to be your friend anymore. And she didn't have a reason. And I've talked about this a lot. I was heartbroken. It felt 10 times worse than any romantic breakup I ever had because this is my best friend and I didn't know what I did and I was so devastated by it. And I thought about it pretty much every single day for so many years. And finally, when I stopped thinking about it as much, I had to see her again at a friend's wedding for the first time in maybe three years. And let me tell you, I had so much anxiety, so much panic over seeing this person because she didn't want to be my friend anymore. She's my best friend. She knew everything about me. And now I was going to see her again. And I saw her. It was awkward. We said hello. We said goodbye. And it probably was not until a year and a half after that moment where I realized how much I forgave her for whatever reason. And I don't ever have to know it. She decided that she didn't want to be my friend anymore. And that's okay. Just because someone is your best friend today doesn't mean they will be your best friend forever. And on the reverse, there's people in my life who I've said, you know what? I feel like I've grown out of this friendship too. Or I feel like this person and I aren't so close anymore and it feels forced, but I'm hanging on to the friendship because I think that friendship lasts forever and it doesn't. And that is a hard lesson to learn. That is a lesson that took me pretty much all of my 20s and half of my 30s to learn, but I have learned it. Along the lines of friendship, I've also learned that if you are not yourself, the people around you will never know who you really are. And that's not real friendship. In the last couple of years, I've made new friends and I've made these friends based on who I am. I share my opinions. I share my thoughts. I stand up for myself. And these people know me more than a lot of the friends that knew me in my 20s. And that is a really cool feeling. Number three, don't let the past guide you. Just because you were rejected in the past or something happened in the past, don't assume that's going to happen in the future. For so long, I was so bogged down by all of the rejection I received. I wrote a book. The book didn't do so well. It was really hard to write another book and sell that book. And I just had these thoughts of nobody cares about you. Nobody wants to hear from you. You're a one book wonder, right? Like I put myself down because of things that happened in the past. But when we do that, we stop fighting for ourselves. And a huge part of life and opportunity is fighting for ourselves. Nobody else is going to do that. So even if things happen in your past, rejections, or you got fired, or you got broken up with, or somebody told you you weren't good enough, please don't let that guide you in the future. Number four, love shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that hard. That took me many, many years to actually understand. And everybody told me maybe one day you'll meet somebody who it's not a game. It's not a challenge. It's not a constant battle. And I didn't understand that. I thought that's how love should be. But let me tell you, it shouldn't be. And when I say that, I don't mean that everything should be positive and happy all of the time. No, there's a healthy amount of fighting. There's communication. There's arguing that happens in any relationship. But it shouldn't be hard. Love shouldn't give you anxiety. It shouldn't give you panic. It shouldn't wake you up at two o'clock in the morning and make you wonder what this person is up to behind your back. It shouldn't make you feel that way. That is something I am so positive about. And anytime I have a friend tell me a story about somebody that they are with that is treating them a certain way, and I I just want to tell them it shouldn't be that hard. And it's coming from a person like me who didn't believe that, who thought it should be hard. It should be dramatic. It should be all of those things. But no, it shouldn't. And finally, it's time to admit your scariest goal so it can come true. Every year, at the end of the year, I write a letter to myself on December 31st and schedule that letter to go out the next December 31st. And I always write like my goals for the future year, the big things I want to do. And I always put down one thing that I have never admitted to somebody else before that I want to accomplish. And in 2020, 
2022, or no, 2021, going into 2022, I wrote something like crazy on that list that I was so scared to admit to myself that seemed outrageous. And that was the first time I ever admitted it out loud. It came true. I'm not really one about like manifesting and all of that, but I am somebody who does believe if you keep lying to yourself, those lies become your truth. But the second you admit to yourself, this is what I want, you put it in motion. You put it out there. And you never know, you might shock yourself. Well, that's my lessons learned for you before I turn 35 on April Fool's Day. If you have anything you want to say, wish me a happy birthday. I would love to hear from you. Send me an email, jenglance at gmail.com or DM me on Instagram at jenglance. Read the newsletter. It's free. Mondaypickmeup.com. That's H-T-T-P dot dot slash slash. Mondaypickmeup.com. There's no WWW. I always have to say that. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, And join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.